Good morning, good morning. Up and running. Look at the light out there. That bright, bright light coming down the road here. It's the sun shining off the windows on the Don Quixote building. This. Thank you. Way worse a minute ago. It was so bright the camera was totally washed out. It'll change in a minute. Once the sun moves, it'll get off those windows and we'll get back to <coughs> back to a normal uh, contrast here. Yeah, like two or three minutes before the sun to move. Yeah, double kegs. Actually, the kegs are blocking our view here. I think, should I go and move one of them? Let's do this. It's blocking our view. I think I can do this. Hang on a sec. The exposure will change in a minute once the sun gets off those windows. At least we can see now. The kegs are light, actually. It's empty. It's just an al aluminum, is it? Steel? I don't know. Very, very light. Lighter than I thought. We might get some treats this morning as far as the view down the street here. There's a reason why I did that. Today is it's a national holiday here in Japan. It's Seijin no Hi, I think is the actual title. Seijin. And it's the day when they have Seijin Shiki, the coming of age ceremony in many, many places. And just down the street here to the right, the opposite direction from the camera, down the street to a little ways off to the right, <coughs> is the uh, city hall, not city hall, office hall, where, where the hall, concert hall, where they will be having the coming of age ceremony this morning. I'm not sure if it's happening twice, 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, they've split it up, I don't remember. Anyway. So this morning, today is the coming of age ceremony. So we see a lot of young people walking around with their super fine finery, kimono and stuff like this. So this morning, we might, towards the end of this stream, as the young people start to gather for this ceremony, we might see a bunch of them walking along the street here from the train station up to the hall. We'll see or not. These ceremonies have been uh, declining in interest. It, it used to be that everybody went. It was compulsory. It was all, you know, rent kimonos, get your hair done, all that kind of stuff. These days, a lot of young people are not so interested in it. So it, uh, it's sort of become a different thing. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You have been warned. It's coming of age day here in Japan. And we should perhaps see some finery. I think last year, somebody's talking about this, I think last year at this time I was printing. I was doing the printing on the hook side. So I put the camera out the window down towards the right hand corner, I think. I'm not quite sure, I don't remember very well. Okay, the block that we carved on the last stream, we, the royal we, the block that I carved on the last stream is now finished. We can't fool around with this. I did all the cutting work on it and then I think at the end of the stream, I went to the end just on this little one piece here to show people what was going on. The rest of it has now, of course, been finished. I worked on it during the shop day, the rest of the day. But yesterday, I left alone the block because I saved the backside for today. If I hadn't saved this, I would have really no stream content today. So we've got the final, final for me, the final color for this print. Did we do this coloring on stream? I don't remember. You can see what we've got here. It looks a bit strange, what's going on. This is a shadow block. It's a tone block that will deepen some tones. You know, like these barrels, for example, there's brown on the outside, brown on the inside, but having a shadow block here will make the inside darker. There's no reason for the two different colors here, just I use two different markers. So yes, it's a shadow block. <laughs> when I was working out who gets what job, dark gray goes to bull. Light gray block went to Kawasaki-san.
the outside view is getting better. Now, as the sun came off, the sun's still shining on donkey, but it's off the windows now. So the light is normal. The light is now coming from the right instead of coming from the left. Which way? We've got some area of not good wood grain here. If I put that here, that'll come in this corner. If I switch it round, that wood grain. No, that's the best way, this way. Paper out. No, there's no paper out today. The board upstairs, the printer's board is, is empty. Nobody's here today. <coughs> We've had three days now, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, with no printers. Tomorrow will be a, won't be a full house. There'll be three, three of them here tomorrow. The jobs. You know, Ishikawa-san is working on one of the Doi Hunger reproductions, the Mitsugiri Ban. Uh, uh, she's working on Akino Miyajima. It's the largest print she's ever made so far. Ayumi-chan is doing a small one. She's doing the postcard size version of the chrysanthemums print, Kiku no Kaori. And Lei chans doing an experiment. She is doing some test printing to bring back to life. I guess I can announce this because I think it's going to happen. And Lei chans doing some test printing. I think we made, did we show it last week? She's doing some test printing on the print that was published together by me and John Amos called Milton. This is one of the proofs she's done. She's done some changes from my original version. And uh, John has said yes to this, no to this, yes to this, no to this. So this print is coming back to life. It'll be in our catalog. If all goes well, it'll be in our catalog again sometime this spring. I don't remember if I mentioned it last week or not. I'm sorry, I don't know. What time is it here? It's just after 8 in the morning. We, we went live a few minutes ago at 8 in the morning. 8 o'clock Tokyo time. have a carving bench at home. There is a bench back there in my home in Ome, the bench I used for all those years. It's still there. I haven't carved anything on it now in probably nearly 10 years. I've done all my carving work. Since we opened the Asakusa shop in 2014, I've done all my carving work here. Don't know where it's going to go from here on out. There are some other options being considered at the moment. We're, we're jammed in this space. We have uh, filled this space. We've run out of this space. Ome is also full. Mokohankan is now at another one of those stages where we are under... What is it? It's like a crabs that grow in the sea. They grow and grow and grow and they outgrow their shell. And they have to hunt around and find another shell to grow into. And Mokohankan actually at the moment is in one of those situations. We've outgrown our two shells. And we're under real stress inside this uh, this area. But it's not so easy for us just to dump this building and pick up another one. Of course, that's that's not really going to be happening. We're not moving out of here, of course. But to try and reconcile that problem. Honey, honey, honey. Build a fourth floor. <laughs> <laughs> they like they do in some countries, right? They just keep going up and up with the concrete until it collapses. We have put some storage sheds up on the roof. You know, the little aluminum sheds that you buy like a garden shed. We've got two of those now. Well, one of those... We've got uh, that sort of thing upstairs now. One we bought from a home center and one that was top of the stairwell. We're using the roof now for storage. 
but we're just uh, we're out of space for working. Yeah, of course, of course. The suggestion to rent one of those spaces in the arcade. No, renting a retail space is pointless. We need more space for back back office stuff. We don't need expensive retail space. And our landlady actually has a partial solution to this. The lady who is renting us this building, she has other properties. Ooh, close. I didn't realize my dumpy paper wasn't quite large enough. So the lady, as I said, our, our landlady does have other properties. And in fact, one of them, she's renovating it right now. And she came to us just before the year and said, Are you guys interested in this? Because she knows our situation, but we're tight. So she has another property. Problem is. Problem is, problem is. It's not next door. It's over on Kappabashi. So that's a bit of a dilemma for us. It's about Kappabashi here. It's about... It's about... 12 minutes walk or so. It's too far, you know, to be able to do an office there and carry prints back and forth. And uh, you're in the office, you want to drop down into the shop. If I was working over there, customers in the shop, Dave, can you come down and say hello? It's 12, 15 minutes walk for me to get over here, say hello, and then go back 12, 15 minutes. It's not practical. It's too far away. And she's thinking, oh, it's just fine. It's fine. It's close enough. I like it. It's not close enough. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Kapabashi itself is a kind of interesting place, and many, many of our customers do do go over there. They leave here. They're asking us, "How do I get to Kapabashi from from here?" And it couldn't be easier. It's just oh, straight down the street. Literally straight down the street. paying someone to transport prints and materials. Well, actually, that's what we do with our Asakusa shop and Ome shop. We have boxes going back and forth, not every day of the week, but almost every day of the week. We use the, <coughs> excuse me, we use the Black Cat transfer service. Of course, it's really super reliable. We just leave, you may have seen, if you come into our shop, you may have seen there's boxes, a couple of cardboard boxes, sitting outside the door. In fact, the other day, this is actually funny, one of the customers, or somebody who was visiting us, a, a customer, a fan, whatever, He'd come down the street, came into the shop. He saw this box outside and worried about porch pirates. He picked it up and brought it inside. Dave, nice to see you. I'm from such and such a place. There's a box just been delivered. Somebody might steal it. And he gave it to me. And I'm like, well, thank you very much. But actually, this is a box going out. So I took it outside again, put it outside where it will be picked up by the delivery company. They just pick up. We just leave it outside and they pick it up. <laughs> so... So he's like, okay, um, thank you. Well, I'm, well, thanks, 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 thanks for the thought, but uh, that's not how it works here in Japan. So, uh, the... <laughs> Did we have a kimono walk by? Kimono spotted. Are you going to count them then? Shall we do a little lottery? What's the count <laughs> going to be today by the end of it? <laughs> You'll see it's a certain type of kimono they wear. I know these are 
well, I guess that all these are people that have become 20 years old this calendar year, coming of age in Japan. The, the legal adulthood age is 20, although that too is breaking up and changing. The age is for drinking, smoking, for joining the military, for voting, for doing this. It's all starting to crack up. It all, it all used to be just 20 for everything. And now it's, uh, it's, I don't even know the numbers anymore. It's different. I think it's 20 still for drinking, but it's uh, different for other numbers, for other, for other activities. So the concept of coming of age is starting to break up. So what I was, anyway, was going to say is, so most of them, they're unmarried uh, young ladies who are 20 years old. And when they wear kimono, they wear the type of the long, long furisode, long sleeve kimonos. So you'll see these. They may have the hakama high, the, the bottom part of the kimono. It'll be a two-part with a hakama at the bottom, and that will be quite high up to their chest, and they'll have a long sleeve kimono on top of that. It's a little bit of an old-fashioned style. It's not the kind of kimono anybody would wear anywhere else other than a ceremony like this. And they will be renting them, of course, renting, renting, renting. In the old days, grandparents would have bought the kimono to be used once only. Now they are renting. Oh, and the lady in Ome, where I go to get my hair cut, this is one of her, well, it's one of her best days, worst days of the year. In order for kids to go to the ceremony at 10 o'clock this morning, they got to get their hair done. And there's like a billion people, all the same age, who want to get it all done at the same time. So she takes appointments all through the night. So people will get up, set their alarm clock, get up at 1 o'clock, go to her hairdresser, get their hair done. Next person, 2 o'clock. Next person, 3 o'clock. Okay, let's get some work done. It's going to take a while. There's also going to be a lot of digging around here. You know, you may see this again. Today's Monday. Maybe you'll see this block again on Thursday. Who knows? I don't know. Let's see. There's a bit of a softy piece of wood. That's okay for a block like this. A very nice weekend here at the shop. It was uh, busy, but not overly busy, nothing stressful. We are now moving into the time we had a sort of a slump in the middle of December where there's not too many visitors. And we're now coming into another one of the, quote, slumps. It's not a, a slump in a negative sense, just simply a time when there are not too many tourists. And there are not many, many people traveling in the middle of January. There were a bunch at the end of the year because people are on holiday, Christmas, New Year's. And now the holiday season's finished and there's not many people traveling in cold January. Except the Australians on their ski visits. Are we okay there? Let's see. Looks good. What did you do today, Daddy? Oh, I spent the day carving radishes.
we had a uh, fun experience here yesterday. It was a, yesterday was a Saturday. I can't remember. The days are all blurred together for the weekend, so I can't tell. You know, what we've got here, you know, sometimes families will come in. Maybe, you know, the one I'm talking about here over the weekend, it was a mother, father, and two kids. And the kids were about, uh, I don't know, six and ten or something like that. Whatever. And they were okay. They were well enough behaved. They, they sort of sat there. They weren't really interested in prints, but their parents wanted to browse through the prints a lot. So, so we're in this situation all the time, and we're prepared for it now. We have a few uh, toys slash puzzles in the back room. And when we see that uh, it, we're in this situation, that the parents are digging in for a while, that they're really going to be here for a while looking at prints, and that the kids are starting to get a little antsy, one of the staff or myself, we will come up to the parents and say, uh, is it okay with you if I uh, like take your kid in the back room for a while? <laughs> and we literally say that. I can I take your kid in the back room there? <laughs> it's a sort of joke. And the parents, like, they look like, what are you talking about? I say, no, no, relax, relax, relax. We've got some activities here. You can see what's going on. Come on, come with me. And the, the, the girl or whatever, the, the kids come with us to the back room. We get some puzzles. It's all on the tatami on the floor. The kids kick their shoes off, and we get them going with a couple of puzzles. We leave them alone, and the parents are fine. They can see what's going on. They can just see straight into the back room. So, <laughs> so anyway, so we had one of these the other day. It was a, a couple from where were they from? I don't remember. Just generic. It was America, I guess. I'm sorry, I don't remember. And the the young lady was about nine or ten, and her brother would have been a couple of years younger. So we get him started. I, I I get him started on this. It's a jigsaw puzzle that that I made years and years and years and years and years ago. So we get it started, and this thing there's sort of well no there's a whole scale, but to to make the conversation easy, there's sort of two kinds of kids. One kind of kid they get what's going on. They can do this. They can enthusiastically sit there, and if they're good at it, still it takes them ten fifteen minutes to do this puzzle. There's another kind of kid that. Maybe they have no experience. Their family doesn't do puzzles and games and stuff, so they're sort of a bit lost and they don't know what to do. In which case, one of the staff sort of looks at them, keeps an eye, and maybe helps them with a key piece, and they can they can get going here. So, you've seen them on the screen. We talked about this is the multi-layered zoo puzzle. Anyway, the point of telling you this story here again, we we mentioned this thing before, but the point of telling you this again was. Whatever, this, the, the young boy wasn't too interested, he was six or something, but the young girl, about nine or ten, she really, really found this interesting. And she did it and geeked out and got going on it, and I was sitting here and I could hear her talking, and, and she basically did it by herself. Maybe the staff member said something, whatever, whatever, whatever. Anyway, she finished, and she finished quite quickly. The parents are still digging into the woodblock prints here. So I jumped back there quickly, I saw what was going on, chatted with her for a second, and this girl seemed like she could maybe... She was, she was an ace at this. So I half-jokingly, not really serious, I said, you know, you did that pretty well, you know. And, and she said, can I do it again? And I'm like, yeah, sure, of course you can do it again. But then it would have just taken two or three minutes because she's done it before. So I said, but how about this? What about doing it blindfolded? And like she and her brother go silent for a minute. I said, blindfolded, you can do it. You can look, you can see the pieces. They're big enough to pick up and hold. Why don't you do it blindfolded? And she says, okay. And she grabs, like her brother had this sort of neck thing. She grabbed it off him, put it over her head. Her mom, dad came and looked like, what's going on, what's going on? I said, relax, 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 relax. She's got this big blindfold on. And here's the puzzle on the floor in front of her. And we let her go. And she pulled it off. She did it. It was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. She pulled it off. Her dad's coming in like, oh my God, oh my God. He's got pictures. He's starting to take pictures of this. And she's not even stressed. She's just not even stressed. Now, she needed a little bit of help because this puzzle, you can't tell if a piece is on top or bottom when you're blindfolded, like which is the top and which is the bottom. You can't see the, 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 the illustration. So her brother helped her with this. He sat there and made sure that they were all the right side up. And when she got one scrambled, he turned it back over and put it the right side up. And she did it. And not only could she do it, like feeling for the shapes, what was astonishing for me was like she'd get the kangaroo in place and then she'd start feeling the curve and she said, oh yeah, 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 next one, next to the kangaroo, it's the squirrel. And she remembered which animal was next to the previous animal from just doing this once a few minutes ago. And my jaw goes, boom. This kid was hip. This kid was hip. I, I don't know, we're not talking Einstein, it's nothing like that, but this young lady really grokked this thing, really, really grokked this thing. And it was so much fun. Her dad was just enjoying watching her do this, you know. 
They weren't from America. I forget. Where were they from? I can't remember now. Somewhere. Somewhere different. Oh, I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I shouldn't say because it identifies. It's okay, whatever. They weren't from, from, they were from somewhere interesting. They had great, great fun doing this, watching this, you know. And actually by then, by the time she finished it the second time around, her parents had finished and they were sort of, they had a plan. We've got to get moving to go to the next this, the next that, the next this. So they did want to get moving, but of course there's no way they're going to disturb her while she's partway through this puzzle. So uh, it worked out really, really, really well. Got a good high five at the end of it. It's fun when people walk out uh, laughing, you know. I mean, we're a shop, a store. You don't think of a store coming in happy and leaving happy, but we're, you know, whatever. It's the way I want to play the game. I just like to see people walking out and saying, yeah, that was so cool. That was such a cool place, you know. I don't know if it's my, just my ego or if I'm, I'm desperate for attention or something. You know, lie down on the couch for analysis here, Dave. You know? I don't know and I don't really care. But we really, really want to see people enjoy themselves here. I don't know, desperately seeking attention or just simply a good idea. I don't know. But she won't forget that one quickly, I think. John, John has gone very quiet. <laughs> come on, come on, leave the guy alone. There's no way. John was a good sport when we did this. John was willing to sit here in front of a live camera and try to do a puzzle in a language he didn't understand. I mean, come on, cut the guy some slack here. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Someone's asking about the Vancouver print party. I don't really know. I haven't heard any. I saw a picture. She put a couple of pictures up on her Google, uh, the family drive. I can't share those. They're on the, on the family uh, family album there. So it seems okay. But I didn't see a picture of a whole bunch of other people doing it. The picture my daughter posted was of uh, her daughter doing the puzzle. So I don't know how the activity went. So are we doing one in February as well? I don't know. 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 I've got a two-week trip over there. I'm flying over on February 7th and coming back here on the 23rd. So it's just two weeks with my family and I've got lots of sort of obligations there. I've got, you know, my mother, of course, to spend a lot of time with. She's in the nursing home. So I'm going to be over there for a lot of the time. Then I've got to see my two kids in there. So I've got to see my son-in-law. There's a whole bunch of uh, people I've got to see. So I'm not sure how I want to organize my time and stuff. Do I want to schedule an event, a big event that will take, you know, a day to prepare and then a big day to do? I'm really not sure what to think about, so. Okay, let me ask then the, the people here, if, and this is, Tony, this is only if, if I did schedule something in mid-February between the 7th and 23rd, some kind of activity there as a fundraiser for my daughter's daycare center, you know, sort of a, party with Dave or, or a show and tell with Dave or something I don't know if I did schedule that would there be enough interest or, or enough people able to get there how can I uh, what can we say that I can gauge interest here can we sort of maybe have a show of hands I don't know people that are close enough to Vancouver if I did an event over there who how many people would like to or would actually think about getting there to come and see it. And it would have to be, there would have to be a cost involved, because the whole point of doing it is a fundraiser for my daughter's hoi quen. And I'm not going to go over there myself and say, hey, spend 10 bucks and come and talk to Dave. <laughs> not the way we do this. But it would have to be a, 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 an event with a ticket price, because that's the whole purpose for their daycare. So. 
would it be worth setting up or there's just going to be two people there and it was just I should have written the check for the daycare myself you know give me a bit of feedback so I don't know We're in the weeds here, of course. Look at this, just little bits of this, little bits of that. This is wood cutting in the weeds. I see lots of comments and suggestions here. Thank you very much. I'll have a look through them later. Careful look through. Thank you. Another aspect uh, to the last few days, I think we chatted about this on the chat a few days ago, because after making the year-end video, there's been a bit of a change in life here and a bit of a change in uh, behavior here. And almost every day now I am seeing this. I think I told you about this the other day. Uh, there was a group of visitors from Finland in the shop and they avoided coming to talk to me because they had seen the last video I made last year where I mentioned that, you know, I was in trouble for getting work done because too many visitors were in the shop and stuff. And that really, really has changed things. Every day now, it wasn't just the people from Finland the other day. Every day now, people are, it's clearly, I can see it in their faces. I was in the shop yesterday hanging around. It was a really, really nice, cool day in the shop yesterday. 
and I'd be here chatting with people and somebody else. And I could see that people were, <coughs> there were clearly people who were avoiding me <laughs> when I was in my chair here. They'd come in, they'd look, and they'd see, and I'd see by their faces that they were sort of, they knew what was going on here, but they didn't come anywhere near my bench. And it's, you know, because of what I said in the video. So I get out, you know, I take my break, whatever, get up, go over there while they're checking out, and I say, how are you doing? And they say, oh, is it okay? Is it okay? I say, yeah, it's okay to talk. No problem. I'm here, you know. So I'm still laughing about this, but it's, the dynamic has changed now. Instead of me just sitting here and people come up and say, hey, hi, how are you doing? I sit here now and I have to watch and try and figure out who should I be talking to, but I'm not talking to because they're too shy or they're being too polite. And so it's sort of, we're still in the same situation. <laughs> and again, I'm just, I'm just going to make it worse by talking about it. The, what we're going to do clearly as this moves forward is we're going to set days. days Dave will be in the shop X day, Y day, maybe, for example, say Saturday, Sunday or something. And simply, I won't be here the other days. So the point being that if I am in the shop, it will be okay to come and talk to me. If I'm not in the shop, well, I'm not there. You, you, you missed out, you know. But at the moment, we're in an in-between situation where I've expressed the idea that people were, quote, bothering me, but I am actually still here. So it's a strange situation right now. Most people are uncomfortable to disturb me, but it's still actually okay because I'm on shop time. You know? And we had this again and again and again over the weekend. Not just Finnish people, you know, whatever, but uh, people from anywhere. So I sort of spoiled it. What I should have done was prepared the solution before making that video. I should have decided what to do, set it up, and then when I made that video, I should have announced the, the solution at the same time. Dave will be available, blah, 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 X day, Y day. And that would have made everything completely clear for everybody. But because I just set the problem and didn't put a solution in place, it's now a really strange situation here. If you come in and I'm here, say hello, it's okay. <laughs> there is somebody saying, do we need permission to talk? No, if you come in and I'm here, so it's okay to feed the Dave, that's it. So, so we'll sort it out and we'll make it clear when it's not okay and when it's okay. But for now, if you come and I'm here, of course, say hello. <laughs> Traffic lights, yeah. So, Tom's saying in favor of an hour schedule rather than a day. So no, no, no. I know because you want to be available. You want to be. You only be in Tokyo for Tuesday, Wednesday. That's Dave's off day. You're out of tree. You're out. You're in trouble. I get it. People would not want. Uh, they can't choose what day to be in Tokyo always. But for me, no, 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 no. It'll be days for me. Absolutely, it'll be days. And current thinking is maybe. It'll be Saturday, Sunday when I'll be here, and other days when I won't. Because Saturday, Sunday is the day when the, the, the store, the, the uh, employees don't bother me. They're not here. There's no shipping, there's no questions, there's no email stuff. So I'm, I'm free Saturday, Sundays to sit here at the bench. I don't get bothered by anybody. That's probably how this is going to play out. Still to be determined. But I should have thought through a little bit more before making the video. That's also too, speaking of you know, YouTube fans and YouTube you know, presenters and bothering YouTube people and stuff like this. There was one, was it the other day, was it Thursday, Friday? Did I talk about this already? I don't remember. It was a bit of a busy spot in the shop one of these days recently. I was behind the counter over there. I was dealing with somebody. They were, you know, doing a passport for, for tax-free or something. I can't even remember what I was doing. But I was behind the counter dealing with somebody. And a couple came in the door, a young man with a, a, a lady with him. And they were chatting as they came in the door, and I couldn't hear exactly what they were saying. But it was clear he knew this place, and he was introducing it. Oh, this is the place I was telling you about. It was that kind of conversation going on. 
I was quite a ways away. I was up behind the counter, but that, that was the conversation. I looked up and then looked back down. And as I looked back down, I did a double take. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I know him. He's been in the shop before. And this is cool for me because I've seen him from a distance now. And it gives me a chance to process, oh, who is this person? Was he here last week or three years ago? Do I remember his name? So when, we, when I recognize from a distance, it gives me a, a, a half a fighting chance to process this. And I'm processing, processing, where, 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 what do I know, where was he, when was he here? Oh, I know, I don't remember, did we have a good conversation? And I was dealing with the other person, so it's happening in the back of my mind. And I didn't get it, and he left with the young lady. Oh, they just turned around. It wasn't because it was too crowded, just they had just dropped in, and he said, this is the place I was talking about, and then they left. Oh, 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 oh. So be it, no problem at all. It took the, the burden off me for trying to think. But my brain was still working on the question, where do I know him from? I know he's been here before. I mean, long story short, it turned out that I remembered him and recognized him, not because he's been here before, but because he is a YouTube presenter whose channel I follow. It was, uh, it was Brett from Two Set Violin. There's a, there's a couple of young men who have an interesting YouTube channel where they play and play around with and fool around with the classical music. And they, they're, they're big. I mean, on YouTube, I'm, I'm a dinky toy. These guys are massive. I don't know, three million followers? More? Four million? I don't know. These guys are, these guys are globally famous. They're as big as I am small on YouTube. This is, these, are, these are the real deal. And it was one of the pair, the young man who plays violin, uh, Brett, and uh, he dropped in. So I felt, I felt a bit relieved. Ah, uh, good, I didn't actually have a chance to make an idiot of myself and prove that I didn't know him. And then I missed a chance to say hello, so... Uh, I think they're on a tour. They're, they're doing, a, they've got a concert, to a global tour, to play concerts and see their fans all over the world. Uh, literally all over the world, they're going everywhere, you name it. They're headed there. There's a tour on at the moment. And I guess they're in Tokyo at the moment. Where to next? It's hard to figure out where to go when it's such a jungle of stuff. I don't want to miss things. There's these small dots, you know. It's hard to figure out where to go next. Kind of behavior do you have to do to make me remember you better? <laughs> I don't know. How would I? What do you have to do to get onto Dave's "I will remember you instantly" list? <laughs> I don't know. The people I do remember, of course, multiple visits. There, there's it's a bad story. You know, there are there are fans, collectors from way before YouTube. I can mention one name. Just okay, for example, a gentleman from Canada called Albert. Albert, uh, uh, and he came one day. Whatever and introduced himself and then came the next time a year later and I didn't remember him, I didn't get it. Maybe it was vague, I remember I've seen you somewhere and he's, Dave, it's me, it's Albert from Canada. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe by the third time or fourth time I got it. So multiple visits will finally get it into Dave's concrete brain here. One yesterday, a gentleman came in who has been a supporter and collector of our work for many, many years and I got it. Instantly I saw him, bing, I got it because again, multiple visits will finally get it in. How am I going to remember you if you've only been here once? Well, you could build a moon lander. I'll, I'll remember. <laughs> I'll remember that young man. Although, having said that, I didn't remember him. He did come back a few weeks later. And I didn't make the connection instantly. I've been too busy talking about his content rather than trying to remember his face. So, I don't know. How do you get into my, uh, how do you get into my database? You know? There's probably there's famous people visiting shop not going to notice. I don't know. I don't have a TV. I don't watch movies and stuff. It could be that there has been, wow, famous people here, and I never even noticed. That's quite possible. I don't know. I only know what I know. That's not only possible, that's probable.
they tell us, man, as you get older, it's important to try and, uh, what do they say, there's a list of stuff to do, you know, exercise daily and eat good food and sleep well. And there's this, you know, there's this long list of things we're supposed to make sure we're doing as we get older. And high up on this list, and on all of these lists, is the thing about, you know, you've got to keep socially active and uh, keep mentally challenged, you know. And boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, am I checking that box with a great big fat check mark? You know? I don't get any more mentally challenged than I'm getting challenged every day here just by doing this stuff. You know, if that was enough to stave off senility, then I'd be I'd be the Einstein till the end of my life. You know, but uh, that's not how it works. But anyway, I'm doing what I can do. New faces every day, trying to remember the people, just all day long. Activity, activity, activity. So this is doctor's orders. I'm not doing it because it's the doctor's orders, but the point being, boy, I'm doing, the, doing what you can do. Motorbike, son? Or is it, is it the ninja boy? Is that the ninja guy coming to work on his ninja brand motorcycle? Yes, it is. Ah, oh, we can't see. He parked it behind the electric lights there. I don't know what the company is, Yamaha or, or whatever, but the, the brand of his motorbike, it says on the side, Ninja. And I guess, is it the motorbike sub-brand name or did he have that painted on? I don't know. I think it's a thing. I think it's a thing you buy. It's the Kawasaki Ninja model or something like that. I don't know. It's Kawasaki, someone says. Okay, good, 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 good. The Beef Ninja, nothing to report next door. The restaurant next door is has been busy. It's the year-end season, so every restaurant is busy. They're not packed out. There's no lineups there. And there's been no sign of the employees changing into ninja outfits. I think that idea simply got put to bed. I don't have any inside information on that. I heard the story that the franchise company wanted to have the employees wear ninja uniforms. The employees resisted. That's all I heard. And there is no sign of such uniforms yet. So that's all I know. I would imagine that the idea got put to bed. I don't know. If I see them, of course, I will not only report to you, I will try and get some uh, visual evidence, but uh, it looks like that is finished. We'll see how it goes. I mean, come on.
For show and tell today, we're going to do something a little bit different. And uh, some of you will really enjoy it, and some of you will think, oh, okay, that's, uh, that was that. Maybe something better tomorrow. Something a little bit different. And there's two reasons for this. One is I don't have a particular a new package arrival or something to open for you today. It's the, the year end season. I haven't been buying a bunch of stuff. But it's not just that. We have lots of prints upstairs we can show. But uh, the, it was in the shop the other day. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. We were showing some people in the shop a certain thing the other day, and this person was uh, a, a Twitch fan. <clears throat> in fact, maybe he's here. Uh, well, he's probably not here because he's traveling in Japan right now. But whatever. There was a, a Twitch uh, of Twitch fan who was in the shop talking to us the other day, and it turned out the young ladies in the shop here were showing him something for a specific reason, and he looked at it, thought it was really interesting. He said, "Dave." This is, you've got to show this to, this to the chat. You've got to show this to the Twitch stream. This is great. I'm like, well, do you think so? He said, yeah, you've got to show this. People will really like to see this. Please, please, please consider this for a show and tell. So whatever. Today I was thinking, you know what? Maybe that might be a good idea for a show and tell. So we'll see it here this afternoon, uh, this morning, at that proper time here. So no green tape today here. No green tape. But we do have an interesting thing to show and tell. We'll see well actually I think it will be interesting because if this thing that I'm going to show you if it were something that we had bought and we're just opening it it would be a blow your socks off moment <laughs> now, I'm not talking about blow your socks off because for me it's just part of our daily life around here you know Oh yeah, okay, that's cool. But if we were opening this thing, oh my God, look what we got! This is insane. <laughs> so, and in fact, that's what he was saying. You know, that's what he was pointing out. You don't know what this is. You don't realize how interesting this is. You know, I'm like, well, it's interesting, but it's not that interesting. He said, No, you don't know. So whatever, there he goes. Now that I've teased it, we'll see at nine fifteen. How is our time, by the way? Didn't talk. Are we okay for time? <clears throat> Eight fifty-four. Coming up to nine o'clock. Always with the teas. Whatever. 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 Someone's asking about the programming background. I, I don't have an official programming background, you know. The first, uh, the, the in input for me, I was working in Toronto. It'd be in the mid 70s, 1977, somewhere in there, 1977, 78. And computers were just sort of starting to, to think about being something that, that there were no, there were no, PCs and stuff like that back then. And my first computing is I got a, a timeshare terminal. I got a dumb terminal. I was working in the music store in Toronto and I rented a dumb terminal that connected to a, a computer downtown. It was a, a PDP 11, I think. And the people in the place where I rented it from, and I was sort of a guinea pig for them. What they were doing was they were trying to develop a multi-user. They were trying to develop. They were trying to put BASIC, the language that was then called BASIC. It's 1970, 77 or 78. They were trying to build a BASIC uh, interpreter for that would run on their Unix system, the PDP that they were using, and they were going to uh, rent these uh, monitors 
the people who would program on them from their own home in basic, a simple little basic. And I, I did this, I rented this thing. It wasn't, they weren't doing it as a commercial opposite proposition yet. They were still building it, these couple of guys doing this. They were called HCR, Human Computing Resources. Anyway, I had this dumb terminal with a, with a telephone, you know, a brr, 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 telephone modem that connected downtown. And I was one of the guinea pigs while they developed this, this language. Step by step, they would implement another, a keyword of the language, and we were tasked with uh, testing this out and writing simple programs that would, uh, that would, uh, that would make this work. And of course, we're, we're, te we're like alpha testers, and this thing worked, and it never really worked properly. And I, I would be learning programming at the same time that I'm an alpha tester for the program language which is a recipe for absolute, complete chaos. Something doesn't work, and of course it doesn't work because you're new at this and you don't know what's going on, or because the, the interpreter is just what it wasn't working, whatever. So I would go down there a couple of times a week and sit with them in their offices and work together on this, and the rest of the week I'd be, a, I'd be in my office there trying to snatch time from my normal music store managing duties. And, and the, the one regret that I have now, it was all good fun. It was really, really good fun. But this was not the way to learn concepts of good programming by testing a basic interpreter. Line 5, go. Line 6, go to 24. And all this kind of stuff. There's no way they train people on programming now with that kind of an environment. But that's, that's where Dave got his little start. So, so it was an acoustic modem. I don't know how many baht it was, 300 baht. I don't remember. I don't have a clue. So. <clears throat> so that was the start. And if I could redesign the way I started, of course I would not recommend that kind of an environment for anybody, you know go to 24 or whatever it was. And it didn't have, it didn't have functions. It didn't have subroutines. It didn't have anything. So me and the other guys who were doing this, all we ended up doing was just writing spaghetti code and building, building stupid programs that just went here and went there and went there and everything was global and there were no objects. And, uh, And of course, the, the stuff I write now for the, for the business here is not anything like that, of course. But uh, you can see the roots. I, you can probably see the roots of my, of my programming history in the stuff that I'm still doing. There's no, there's no go-tos, please, please. It's functions and objects and whatever, but, uh, <laughs> but the roots are there. So. That would be 1977, I guess. And then the next step on it, uh, I, I, the environment that I was using there, of course, was not anywhere suitable for using in our music store environment. We needed accounting functions and the inventory control and processing sales orders and stuff like this, you know. So uh, it would be a year later, a couple of years later, 1980, I guess, 79 or 80, where uh, I left that stuff aside and I bought the first, I don't know, one of the first small computers available in Canada. It was a CBM, Commodore Business Machines, 8032. 32 kilobytes of memory. Astonishing. 32 kilobytes. You couldn't use all of it, but you could use most of it. And I wrote systems on that machine, and we, we, we greatly, greatly uh, improved our business operations with software I wrote on that. CBM 8032. <laughs> Thank you.
This, every time this topic comes up, we have the same thing. Everybody jumps in with their first computer programming experiences. Sinclairs, Atari's, whatever. Sorry about this. So, I didn't start this topic. I shouldn't have answered it. So. <laughs> I've been reading the chats at lunchtime, you know. I have been reading, so everything I miss these days, it's rare that I, that I miss the whole thing. Back when we were really totally flooded in the middle of, uh, of autumn or something, I did miss some. But now in the off season for us, I have actually been chewing through the chat and reading it. And it's, uh, it's funny because sometimes when I'm reading it, I don't remember what I'd said because what I said doesn't appear in the chat, you know. So it's a bit funny. To, what did I say that inspired that bit of conversation or whatever, so on. <clears throat> oh, I see a comment here from Return to Earth 6. I know he wrote, actually, privately. Thank you, guys, for the, for the comments and the thank yous about the stream. Nice to hear that you're, uh, you're getting some, what's the word? I don't say getting use out of this. That's not the right word, I guess. So, yeah, thank you for the feedback. Yeah. Anytime programming comes up, we get carried away. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So we're with the carving knives like the one from Ito-san. I know the knife I've got here is just a generic knife. I know the Ito-san story with the knife, it is what it is and it's true, but there's one aspect to the Ito-san knife story that I didn't really make clear at the time in the video or when I was talking to uh, to uh, the NHK guy. I know, oh my God, come on, Dave, name, 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 Peter Barrican. The specific knife that I showed in those videos, this is Ito-san's knife, and one day when I'm good enough, I will be able to use this without breaking it, was absolutely true. The, the little bit of a quirk in the story is that the knife that I showed in that one was a knife sharpened and beveled in a certain way for only one type of hair carving, for carving the finest ukiyo-e hairs. Ito-san would not have used that knife for normal daily work like we're doing here because it would have been much too susceptible to breaking. There is one more video coming in the Re Remembering a Carver series. There's part three, the epilogue to Remembering a Carver. And this is one point that I will be addressing in that, uh, that wrap-up to the series. So that, that knife is not a normal daily use knife. And even Ito-san would have not have used it for something like we're using here. And maybe what I'll do is I'll show, I'll get Taran-san to join me in that video and we'll show knives A, B, C, D, the same blade sharpened different ways for different kinds of use. And we'll clarify something like that. There's no end to the stories and descriptions. <coughs> no end. I guess I mentioned the show in, in the, about a month ago. So Ito San's daughter dropped by along with uh, his granddaughter. They, you know, said hello in the year end. I sat and uh, and we we made a date. Not not with a day, but we we agreed. Hey, can I get over there? Can I make some cameras? Can we talk? And part of the epilogue uh, for that video will be meeting Ito San's daughter and granddaughter and uh, hearing their reaction to how 
how it feels that their father, grandfather's work is uh, all over the internet these days. You know. There's also a bunch of other things to clarify. I know the Remembering a Carver video gets lots of feedback. And there is one particular type of feedback that is really a misunderstanding among the viewers. And it's another reason why I need to do part three of that video. To make something a little bit clear that I myself never even considered talking about in the first video. But which people have sort of jumped to conclusions and are feeling a bit negative. And there are many people who watch that video and think, geez, that old carver, man oh man, he should have spent much more time with Dave, he should have been willing to teach Dave everything, he should have this, should have that, should have that. And there's a bit of negative comment sometimes on that video, why wasn't Ito-san more friendly to you, why didn't he agree to help you more, and stuff like this. And I, I really want to talk about that topic, because he had absolutely zero responsibility to me or to the craft or to pushing this thing forward to the future. Absolutely zero. He was a hired carver who did really a good job for the people who hired him, doing what he could to do his job properly, efficiently, quickly, with good work. And that's the end of his responsibility. There is absolutely no overall larger, wider social responsibility for a man like that at all. And people uh, were feeling negative about this on the video sometimes because I had expressed my own frustration about being not able to get hold of some of this knowledge. It was not his responsibility to deliver it. It was my responsibility to hunt it down. And that's the way it has been in Japan and I feel it should be all the way along. When a young worker joins a workshop, they teach him basically nothing. He has got to be hungry. He has got to be inquisitive. He's got to challenge the environment. And he has got to drink it for himself. Nobody opens your mouth and pours it in. It's the way it goes. And that's the environment he grew up in, the place he was trained in, and that was his embedded way of thinking. He ended up being willing to spend some time with me because he obviously could see that here's a person who really is hungry to learn. He was willing to do that, but it was not his responsibility to do that in any way whatsoever. We're going to talk about that topic when we make this next video. Flashing lights, S and T, S and T, nine ten. We got five more minutes. It's okay. Looks like lots of good thick conversation happening there. Great, thank you. balance and stuff is a little bit thrown off right now. Not, nothing dramatic, I'm over, over dramatize this, but uh, on Saturday I had a really, really nice dinner, a little bit of an unusual dinner. I don't normally go to buffet type places, you know, as in all you can eat for X amount, whatever. But the Sadoko and I had dinner uh, on, on Saturday at a buffet place, and it wasn't, it's not like advertised as all you can eat, that's not the idea. 
We're not going in there to get stuffed and see how much we can stagger away with. The point being simply, it was a buffet type serving. That's all. And we paid, and I think they said 90 minutes or something, or two hours, I can't remember. This is the session started, we, it all started at 7.30, and the guy explained or something, tip, 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 got to be out by 9.30 or, or 9 o'clock, I don't even remember. But that wasn't our approach. We weren't there within a short period of time to stuff as much food into our body as possible. But it was buffet, so we went up there, had a salad, something first, came down, relaxed, enjoyed the view, then had a bit more food and a bit more food. So even though I know, it wasn't the intent to eat a lot, because it took longer than a normal dinner we would have together, and it was nibble this, nibble this, nibble this. The point being, I did eat more than I normally would have eaten. And the rest of the evening were sort of, wow, boy, oh boy, that was a nice dinner. To show. But it's now it's thrown me off a little bit. So the next morning I wasn't hungry, didn't eat breakfast. Then at lunch I was, am I really hungry or not? I don't know. It's thrown off the balance of what my body is expected to, to be processing. Again, not, not to uh, overly emphasize this. I'm fine. Things are okay. But uh, as you get older, I guess, really these things do get uh, easy to, to throw you off kilter a little bit. If you don't have exactly the same food and exactly the same thing, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, every day. So, so I certainly want to, wouldn't want to repeat this experience uh, a lot. You know. But we had a very pleasant evening, a very, very pleasant uh, dinner. We were in a, a, a higher place that had a good view. And from where we were, we could see, you know, like this, the sky tree and stuff. And we could actually, we saw the fireworks at Disneyland. You could see those from this restaurant. We weren't sure what they were at first. Like, what's going on? There's this lights flashing in the sky. And we realized, oh, wait a minute, that's the distance. That's over there. That must be Disneyland fireworks. I just heard footsteps going up the stairs behind me, and I am now nervous. That sounds like a printer coming in and going to work. And there were no yellow dots on the board today. So have I missed something? Was I supposed to take paper out for somebody? Dave is now a little bit nervous here. Or was it just one of the shop staff people coming in earlier? Did you see who it was? Nine fifteen, okay, let's switch over. Kimono counter 11. So, <laughs> Today's a national holiday. There's, there, there should be nobody upstairs working. And normally around now, 9 o'clock, some of the people come in. Ayano, Yamada-kun, and other people. Today's a holiday. There should be nobody in the office upstairs. So I don't know. My only guess is it's one of the printers, and either they forgot to put a, a button on there, or maybe they're doing... Uh, maybe they're making paper wet or, or drying paper or something. I have no idea. Could be somebody here to do paper preparation. In which case they don't need a button and I wouldn't know. Okay, show and tell. The, the incident in the shop the other day that inspired this was this. We have these two black folders. <coughs> we have these two black folders behind the counter in the shop. And many, many, many times people ask us, can you explain how these prints are made? Now we have in the shop, we have a wood block and the corresponding print on the wall there so people can see the concept. Here's a piece of chopped wood and there's the print that's made from it. 
but there's really no way to show people the entire whole process. So we've got, we've built up this two folders. And what we have here is we have a Junjo Zuri. Tago no Ura Junjo Zuri. And if, ever, if you remember your Japanese, people are looking at this. Junjo Zuri means step by step printing. So we have a way here to show you the step-by-step -step printing of one of our more complicated prints. And people really, really, really dig this. And let's have a go and step through this. So how can I arrange this? Let me get my light bulb out of the way. One sec. One day I'll drop it when I'm doing this. But let's see, maybe I'm okay. Which is which? Okay, we start with your blank piece of paper. And we have, <coughs> which one should be bottom and top? Let's do this one. Will that do it? Here we go. The key block. The first piece of wood, the key block. And of course, it prints and gives you the key block, nothing else. We then move on to a separate piece of wood, and the key point being, we're going to assume that, that people here, oh, covering the microphone. Hi, gotcha. One piece of wood for the key block prints just this. The second piece of wood, a totally separate piece of wood, the same general dimensions, and you can see there's a pattern carved in it that sort of matches the key block. It prints a different color and you get the addition. One plus one is two. And you can see the concept of how this is going to go. And we keep this at the counter and people look through this and they really then get the idea of how this works. And the, it's not just simply one plus one plus one. There's so many interesting things to point out here. So stick with me on this. Next one, of course, a simple gradation going down on what looks like a random shape which gives us a mountain. Another one, reflection coming up, which gives us this. And already now we see one of the main, 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 main points about our printmaking. We cannot create light colored objects. We can only create dark things. And the mist that is already starting to appear on this print, look, we have mist, a physical thing but it wasn't created by itself. It was created by space left over after doing something else. And there's nothing more key about how our prints are made than this. Oil painting, take a brown canvas, whatever, paint white stuff on it, white clouds. We don't and can't do that. Let's move on, it gets better. This reflection, remember it, because we're gonna need this in a minute. Next one, another gradation down, intensifying the shape of the mountain, intensifying the mist. Another new block here. We go back to the block a minute ago. This is a different block. This one was carved up this distance. This is carved, you can see, surrounding the reflection. Now something is really coming in here. Look what happens. I'm not sure if it's gonna be the same to you on the camera as it is live. This area, the reflection area, was printed with a certain tone of pigment. Now it stays the same, it doesn't change, but me looking at this here live, the tone of the reflection area here and the tone of the reflection area here are different. This is lighter because now it has been surrounded by a darker color 
and it appears lighter. I don't know if that's going to show at your distance. I think it does actually. I'm looking at the monitor here. You look here, it's got a certain dark depth. You look here, it's actually to me here, it's lighter. And it's not, it's exactly the same, but because it's surrounded by darker objects, it becomes lighter. So you think of the problem then, the printer, when he's doing this back here, he's printing this on before other light, darker colors come in. You have no idea how dark to make it. Your brain is getting fooled. It looks good to me. Uh -huh, it's not look any good when darker stuff comes in. You have to mock it up in your mind what's happening later on. We did the same thing at the top that we did at the bottom. We've got a block cut that has the shapes cut out of it and we're putting in a pink area here. Now, something else to mention that's not specifically related to making the print, but it's a bit of a conundrum about this print. The title of this is Tago no Uda. We are in a place called Tago, Tago Bay, looking up towards Mount Fuji. And it's almost directly north when you stand at the seacoast of this bay and look north towards Mount Fuji. Looking north, and we see a pink glow in the sky behind the mountain. Really? Evening? I don't know. Sunrise? I don't know. What happens over the North Pole? I don't know. <laughs> Artistic license. We're looking directly north. And here again, same thing now. We're adding more dark, and it ends up Let's zoom in for a minute. Adding more dark areas gives us more bright snow on the mountains. I have bushfires in northern Canada. <laughs> <It's> so... <laughs> this was 19... I forget when was this made. 19... I'm going to take a while, I guess. 1937? Somewhere around there? Somebody can find it. If somebody can look this, look this print up on uh, ukiwe.org or something. The name of the print is Fuji from Tago Bay, or Tago no Ura, and it's by Tsuchiya Koitsu. <coughs> and now, <coughs> excuse me, and now we get into the weeds. The main elements of the image are now in place, but now we get into the weeds. A whole bunch of small blocks coming up now with different small patchy areas to create the mid-range of this print. And we can see already somewhere where actually there's evidence here that Dave screwed up. I did this print based on reverse engineering. I didn't have the set of blocks to study. I just had the finished print. And looking at the finished print, it wasn't clear where the boundaries for each area were. And I thought this was going to be a block that would print in deep purple, but it turned out no. When I put this tree and this land on the same block, it turned out to not work. So I had to print this as a gradation. On the original block set, these are almost certainly separated. Trees are a deeper purple, the land area is a lighter purple. I got it wrong, and rather than going back and carving different blocks, I thought it would just be simpler doing our printing to print that one with a gradation. It was complicated. Complicated, complicated. It does look like Bob Ross, doesn't it? It's made in a completely, totally different way, but it really does look not, not unlike a Bob Ross object. And again, the same thing here. These are actually the same color, but why do we do two blocks for the same color? Because they overlap in some places. They give you added depth by overlapping. So it's not just color one, color two, color three. It's adding up color A and B to make C, and it's adding A and A to make B. That's also part of it. This is color A and color A, add them up, and we get color B. Here we have some people. Oh, coming in, coming in. Oh, two together. Good morning, good morning. Urugawa san and Ken san. Good morning. Coming in on a holiday. Thanks, guys, for doing this. Thank you. Okay, now, something else important here. We've got a sky block here. Oh, no, Sam. Hello, thank you.
Okay, guys, so we can try and keep Jockey. Give, give me three more minutes here to finish off. Thank you very much. We've got now the same block. We've got the mountain with the shape of the tree cut out of it. We've already used this piece of wood for the tint in the sky. We're now going to use the same piece of wood again for a darker blue from the top of the sky. And if you know anything about this print, you'll know that we're not finished yet. This block is coming back again. Vivid KP is asking, do I have a picture of it? Yes, I do. I should have put it up. There it is. Vivid asked me too late. Here we are. There's the finished print. And now we start to build up the tree. For the tree, we're going to use one, two, three blocks cut for the tree, giving us one, two, three. And a tree with lots of light inside it. It's not just one block for the tree, it's three. On come the leaves. And some of the, the staff in the shop here, when they're pointing out some of these things, they like to get to this one. It looks like a blank sheet of paper when people first turn the page. It's actually a very, very faint tint that gives us a faint tint up on the mountain. And of course, the body to the boat and another faint touch down here, which you can barely see. And we're still not done. I haven't been counting. Is it 23? I don't know. Another block being reused. We've already had the sea area as a flat color. Now we've got a gradation. And the difference here, flat color, and now a gradation. And the sky comes in once more, and twice more to richen it up. The final one is simply the Koitsu seal. There we have it. You're looking at the actual print here. The one on the left is a scan. What was it? 23? I don't remember. Should I do a quick count? How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Twenty-two impressions. Actually, there's twenty-three because we did an impression on the blank paper first to help get the paper flat to ready to make this thing. And then to make this album, so many impressions because the last one here has 23 impressions. This one has 22. This one has 21, 2019. It's like making 23 different prints. Okay, thank you to the Twitch uh, viewer who was in the shop last week who suggested that we use this for the show and tell. Maybe it's old news to some of you. I don't know. To me, I think actually this has been interesting and something worth showing. It's Monday now. We're at 9.30. Thank you very much. I will, of course, now be out of here. I'll be back again Thursday. I'm not quite sure what work I'll be doing because presumably now the carving work is going to be finished on this print. There's sunshine. Woo! 14 kimonos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for keeping track. Okay, we've got our delivery truck outside delivering cold, hot towels every day at this time. Thanks, gang. See you in a few more days. I've got to go out and fix the uh, keg before the people next door complain. Thanks very much. Counting down. Three, two, one. See you next time. Bye for now.